Yeah, I, I don't really have an excuse for it or, or a reason for it. Um, on the night, you can't afford to give the All Blacks access points like we did. Uh, that, they're good enough to win games without us inviting them in, and uh, it was incredibly disappointing. Uh, I think we're a little bit flat, uh, you know, on the, on the back of uh, having a few niggles during the week, and we weren't quite sure what the team would be till till Thursday. And uh, I, I felt that we needed to get off to a good start to to really build a bit of confidence. And and when when that didn't happen, I always felt that we'd be a bit vulnerable, but. Uh, you know, once we were 22 nil down at half time, and again, you know, what was really frustrating about that, the third try, we had a really good space for, for Keith Earls on the trail line. Uh, we had a little bit of space on the overlap for Jacob Stockdale, and we just, we just didn't quite put things together. We spilt that ball, and on the back of it, the All Blacks scored, and they didn't really have to earn that. They, uh, they finished it off really well, but uh, those are those are the frustrating things because you've got to make the All Blacks work for everything if they're going to get it. And um, you know, I felt that in the past w w we had forced them to do that, even even when we'd lost them, and certainly, obviously, when we'd beaten them. So uh, that that made it very tough. Then we were chasing the game in the second half, and if you're chasing the game against the All Blacks and you're not absolutely nailed on, then you know, you're going to allow them. Opportunities, and that's exactly what we did. Straight after half time, they took the ball back into their own 22, and we we catch it with a foot and touch. Where you know we, we probably should let that go, and and then we've got a line out inside the 22 to start the the second half, and to give ourselves a little bit of of oxygen. But we 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 sort of invited them straight back in again. Thank you. Next question, please. In the middle there, please. Joe, how do you account for the decline in performance over the last 11 months to go from what you were able to produce so consistently at that point to arriving at the most important moment of the whole thing and producing that performance? Um, yeah, I, I think there's always a myriad of factors. I do think when you hit a height, uh, there is always a... You know, a I guess a, a little bit of a, a a drop because it, it, it's it's not perfect. We we work with human beings and and um, you know inevitably when uh, when you've reached the height, there is uh, certainly not complacency, but there 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 was an unfortunate uh, I suppose aiming up for this tournament. One of the things that we tried to do was experiment a little bit in the Six Nations, give responsibility to a few younger players, try to build the group. We try to use the Six Nations as a platform for that because we felt that we'd won three of the last five of them, that, that this is really what we wanted. And so that's why it's so devastating tonight that what we really wanted, we didn't produce the performance that we needed on the night. And um, you know, while there, there might be a few reasons for that, with uh, the, the short week that we had and uh, and the niggles that we had, so that we weren't quite, uh, you know, probably as as uh, regenerated as we would have liked to have been. Those those er that error count that was mentioned that that does make it incredibly tough, and uh, I, I don't really have a reason for that other than on the night. There's always anxiety. There's always guys who, who might overreach and, and as a result you um, you don't get the performance that you're looking for. Thank you. Gentleman there, please. Uh, Joe Mark here from uh, Stuff in New Zealand. Um, how much credit do you give to the All Blacks for, I guess, the unsettled nature of your performance? I think in the first half they missed one tackle. Um, they obviously contributed to your, um, to, to, your, to your error rate. How much credit do you give them? Sure. <laughs> you know, we could have played really well and they still might have got over the top of us. That's how good they are. And, and uh, they were stifling. They, they made it very, very hard for us to breathe. And um, what was probably most frustrating, Mark, is that when we did have opportunities to breathe, we actually gave them oxygen back by missing touch or, or by missing a, a trail line when... when I felt we had an opportunity for a line break, and, and in the end, it's an all-black try. 
Um, so uh, I think it was a mix of the two for sure. They, they're a super team. And uh, I, you know, I, I said on Thursday that you have to be absolutely nailed on to topple them. And uh, we weren't nailed on. And, and that's, that's how you get a 30 point differential on a scoreboard because uh, they, they, can, they can accumulate those points so quickly because of the pressure they put on, whether they've got the ball or not. And as you say, I think they missed one tackle in the first half and we, must, we missed about 10. And you know, that, that differential is not great to start with. Thank you. We'll swing round to the right there, please. Did, did you want one at the front? Yes, thank you. Uh, hi there, Joe Richard Carth from AFP. Um, what did you make of Johnny Sexton's decision to uh, go for touch rather than take some points, uh, I think, with about 20 minutes gone? And how would you assess his performance overall tonight? Thank you. Yeah, I, again, those decisions are made by Rory and Johnny and, and Pete and those guys who are on-field leaders. Uh, that's, that's what you do when you coach. You, you help people become the leaders that, that they need to be and they make those decisions. And sometimes on the back of them, you, you get the points that you need and, and other times you don't. You know, I thought we were pretty unlucky toward the end of the half where we did decide to go for the, um, for the touch and... Yo, know, if we could have got a seven pointer there at 22 7, you, you kind of feel like you've at least got a little bit of a toehold. So, you know, sometimes you, you, you're a little bit damned if you do and damned if you don't. Um, I, I think a couple of those penalties, certainly the, the ones where he missed touch, they were quite a long way out. I'm not sure that he would have taken a shot at those anyway. Thank you. There's one midway there, please, if you could just raise your hand. Thank you. The microphone's coming. Thank you. Joe, it, it was uh, kind of an exhibition of offloading at times tonight from the All Blacks. It was kind of similar to four years ago when we were watching the style of Argentina and how good and how impressive they were. Do you think that our game plan has evolved enough in the intervening four years? Yeah, I think we've demonstrated that in the intervening four years. I think there's, there's no team that we haven't beaten and we've pretty much beaten every team at their home, apart from the All Blacks, and, and we've beaten them on a neutral venue. So, um, you, you know, I, I think it's a performance tonight that we're really disappointed with. I don't think it is as good as we can we can put out there. And um, as I said, I, I have huge respect for the All Blacks. Um, you know, I started watching them when I was three or four years old and, and supporting them. Um, I, I, I certainly, the group of men I work with are, are, are those that I support fully now, and, and it was disappointing that they didn't quite get their best foot forward tonight. But I, I thought it was a, a really impressive uh, All Black performance. And when you look at other teams, uh, I think Australia offload um, every bit as often as the All Blacks do, and, and they got beaten 36 0 last time they played the All Blacks. <laughs> when the All Blacks were in a, a similar sort of mood. So you, you don't need to be too far off the margin to, to accumulate or to receive an accumulation of points against a, a team of that quality. Um, I, I, I think, as I said, we did actually have a couple of chances to get access points, but we gave the ball straight back to them. So we didn't really get the chance to... to to even express ourselves too much in the game because we, we, we just weren't accurate enough. Thank you. Lady on the second row, please. Oh, Olga Komenko, NHK. Uh, we would like to ask you, uh, what was the reason for too many tackle misses tonight? And also, uh, how do you feel about not getting into the best four again in the second World Cup? Yeah, it's... Tough question, obviously. We'd, we'd love to have gotten the top four, um, you know, because there's a number of things this group of players have achieved, and, and that's the one thing that, that, that remains uh, and, and continues to remain elusive. So we're incredibly disappointed. I, I think uh, you know, heartbroken wouldn't be too far away from how I feel and, and how the players feel right now, because... Uh, Right after the November series, when we played the All Blacks last, last year, we decided that we really wanted to make sure that this, this was our target. And, um, and maybe, it, maybe it consumed us a little bit too much and, and uh, we got distracted from 
you know, our, our normal game-to-game -game focus. But uh, the tackle misses when you're up against a team like the All Blacks, they, they have a, a strength and power and a, a number of elusive runners that if you're not in the right position to make the tackle or, or you get slightly wrong-footed, you, um, you do slip off tackles. And um, when you've got wave after wave of them coming and then you finally get relief and you look to put the ball down the field and you end up giving it straight back to them, then you're straight back under the pump. And um, I, I do think that, that mentally it takes a toll on players when they, they don't quite get to, to have that belief that we're going to get an opportunity with the ball and, and uh, even an opportunity in, in the All Black 22. The only real time we got into the 22 in the first half was, was right at the end of the half. And you know, I'm not quite sure what the decision was for with, with Pete Omani making contact with someone's backside. But, um, you know, uh, it, that, that was disappointing because it's a, a penalty that gets turned around. And again, we, we lose that oxygen and that belief to, to try to get a, a little bit of a foothold back into the game. Thank you. Move over to the left, please. Joe, you enjoyed some great times in your, your, your time in Ireland, great days, uh, even two quarter-final defeats at the World Cup. How damaging do you think that is when you, when you do eventually reflect on your time? Well, uh, you know, I think the last one, you, you tend to carry scars a lot more than... Um, your successes and so those those scars are deep and that's you know that's why I, I, I am a little bit broken by it but I, I think when I get some distance to reflect um, you know I, I think it's 75 maybe 75 odd test matches and, and we've won 75 percent of them um, as I said there's, there's been some incredibly incredibly good days and I don't think they get washed away by, by two defeats and, and, and days where you know, we're, we're incredibly disappointed. Um, you know, I felt we, we had good reason four years ago where we lost our leadership uh, prior to the, the quarter final, but um, you know, we, just, we just met a team who, who, who I think are, are number one in the world for a reason. And, you know, I think if you're not on the money, as I said, you, you're going to be really disappointed, and and I am. Thank you. Time for two more questions. Gentleman there with the blue shirt on, yes. And then, then you find a question. Just raise your hand. Yes, that one. Thank you. No. Uh, yes. Yeah, you... <laughs> That's it, thank Corey, you. And then you, it, sir. Yeah, thank you. How tough is it to finish like that? And what do you think it is about World Cup quarterfinals that our Irish players seem to struggle with so much? Um, that was an, an incredibly tough test match today. Obviously, I think whenever you play the All Blacks at, at this stage of the competition, they are they're obviously in, incredibly focused. There, there's a lot of pressure on them, and, and I think we allowed them to, to get a good start, which took a little bit of the pressure off um, in terms of quarterfinals. I'm not sure. Maybe we we put. You know, everyone talks about the, the pressure that's on the All Blacks for quarterfinals, but whenever you haven't won one, and, and you feel you have an incredible opportunity because you've got a great coaching setup, you've got a great group of players, and, and maybe you put too much pressure on. And maybe, like Joe said, maybe we we have been looking at this for for too long, and and we got sort of so focused on it that that we forgot to to win some of the little battles along the way over the last just under 12 months. Um, look, uh, um, we, we wanted to set a bar that no Irish team had, had done before. Um, we've done that numerous times under the sort of six and a half years with Joe. And I, I think it, it was important for us to win a quarter final because then it becomes almost a habit. You know, we, we talked about it years ago. I remember Paul O'Connell saying about, about beating France when we beat them three times in a row leading into the last World Cup that that then becomes a habit that you expect to beat France. Because before that, like a lot of the times whenever I was playing, they were the team that stopped us winning Grand Slams and, and that became a habit. And, and I think with Joe, 
he was able to take away a little bit of the fear factor that the All Blacks held in, in the last three tests. And I think when you do that, they see you coming a lot more and, and they're a lot more prepared. And when you get the best team in the world fully prepared and fully focused on you, um, it becomes that little bit more difficult. And, and when you make a few errors, when there's a few errors forced upon you and, and you let them get their tails up on a big start, it becomes even harder. Thank you. I think we have time for one quick question. The gentleman's been waiting there a long time. Thank you. Japan Shueisha Mamatsuse. My question is to Captain. It was your last test match. How do you feel right now? What is your impression about this Rugby World Cup in Japan? Uh, right now, um, tired, sore, upset. Um, look, and I think it's Joe did touch on it that, that right now you, you focus on what's just gone, and we're incredibly disappointed. It was a we have a, a lot of big characters in that changing room, and it's not often that you get a changing room that's, that's deadly silent, and, and that was what happened. You know, there was. There was big men in tears, and, and you know that's what happens whenever you put your heart and soul into everything. Um, but you hope, um, given time, that you get time to reflect on on what has been an incredible few years for this team. And like I say, right now it's it's focused on the disappointment, but but we will look back. I think this World Cup has been we've had some 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 big occasions, you know, we started the, it was so much pressure heaped on us at the start and that we don't start tournaments well and this, that, the other, and we come out and we produced a big performance against Scotland and we dipped against Japan who, you know, went from strength to strength, they're a, they're a fantastic team and it has been a little bit of a, a roller coaster of emotion, pressure, everything and, and I think what's been, been really good is, is the way that this group has stuck together and, and honestly the way we're prepared this week, we went into this game fully expecting to win you don't always get that but at least we had that and it didn't happen first tonight but I think this World Cup in Japan has had a lot of things, it's had upsets it's had weather, it's had some fantastic performances and I think credit has to go to, to Japanese rugby and and world rugby for for you know having the I suppose the balls to bring it here and, and you know I think it's been a fantastic tournament and we're unbelievably upset to be leaving it and, and I'm unbelievably upset to have, with the thought that I'll never pull on a green jersey again except to go and support. Okay. Thank you both very much for your time this evening. Um, and we'll move on to the second press conference shortly. Thank you.